All right, so I already had this one conduit right here that went up there, and that was a three-phase uh, breaker, and that was a one, just a, a blank of a, some one tens. So I have added a new 60 amp breaker and some number eight wires that I pulled, um, and that breaker was 140 dollars, um, and then probably about 80 dollars worth of uh, wiring there. And I didn't do a great job on the conduit, honestly. Uh, I'm not really a conduit kind of guy. I mean, it's up here and it's strong. It's not going to go anywhere. It's just kind of crooked. So um, so I came down to this 50 amp three-phase plug here. And, uh, and then, by the way, thanks to Chris from Minnesota, one of my viewers contacted me. I had a lot of people on my last video... Uh, leave me a comment. They didn't offer any help at all. All they did was, what are you doing asking questions to YouTube? Call an electrician. Well, guess what? There's a lot of electricians that watch YouTube videos and uh, quite a few of them that follow my channel. I uh, don't know who all they are. I know of a couple of them. And, um, and I also have a lot of guys that work with a lot of machinery, big, heavy, you know, stuff. And that they may not be electricians, but they've got a lot of experience in this kind of stuff. So um, I did call some local electricians and didn't get a call back from any of them. So your residential guys are not going to know anything about this stuff. And the guys that are industrial guys, they're busy. They're like slammed and they have no interest in coming out, you know, and letting me pay them a few hundred bucks to do one run. It's just not that. I mean, they got, you know, they stay busy with big jobs and yeah, so they just don't, don't have the time. So I, I pulled back to this. I pulled number eight to here and then number 10 coming out into the transformer and 10 coming out into this. And eventually I'm going to, you know, collapse all these down. I'll probably shorten all this, but for now, while I'm still working on it, you know, we've got some, some extra length here to give us room. And then this is the main uh, control cabinet for this tube cutting laser. And they got number 10 going into that. Uh, a 60 amp breaker is, is too big for that. But this has contactors and breakers. Uh, this thing has got lots of contactors and breakers. That's the servo drives. Um, there is the Rakus 1 kilowatt power source. And I was just getting that installed. It's interesting that the uh, fiber optic line for that uh, is made into the uh, to the unit. It can't be disconnected, so it makes you know stringing that thing uh, along the cable track and all that a little more difficult. Um, so we got more breakers, and you know, basically you you almost kind of think of this as your fuse box, and so they they want a bigger amperage overall breaker coming to it and then they're they'll control the individual components from here so um but anyway um so what we have are let me show you this the ac servos that run this thing and that rakus power source that you just saw for the laser these are 380 volt three phase so that's um that's what i needed to uh get it and we also have a water chiller which i have stuck back there uh and i'm gonna move that i've still got to get that wired in but let me uh let me show you what's going on here let me flip this breaker and you heard the the uh transformer come on so the one thing i had questions on on the last video that i didn't you know, explain here on this is, uh, that I didn't quite understand, but the inputs, the three 220 inputs that you see there, those are coming in, you know, uh, from my breaker and I've just got a ground wire going and grounding the chassis. Um, and then this step up transformer produces this, they produce three hot three eighties, um, a neutral and a ground. And, um, so my SO cord that I'm running here is only a four wire and I could not get five wire easily. And I, in fact, I already had this available. So I converted my ground over to be a black wire and ran the ground as a separate wire 
you know, uh, on the outside there. And uh, the green wire is now neutral coming from here. And the neutral on this one is uh, in Chinese. Well, I've already, the labels are right here. I don't have them on there at the moment. Got to stick those back on. But um, so the neutral's coming in right there. The three hots and then the ground. And then uh, I'll bring my other <clears throat> wires in from this to get that connected up. So I just thought I'd show that. That was really what was throwing me off. I didn't, I couldn't understand the, how there was no um, neutral input, but there's a neutral output. And basically the transformer's creating that, that neutral. And um, yeah. So, all right guys, see ya. And if you look on the front here, this thing, it's putting out about five, almost 500 volts, you know, 400, 70 volts or so and uh, Chris had calculated it I think at 425 volts is what he had it coming out as um, but my voltmeter only goes to my little cheapy Radio Shack voltmeter only goes to 400 volts so I couldn't even measure that luckily it's got a gauge on the front of it but this thing and if you if you measure between the the uh, legs you know I've got the 240 high leg version of three phase here um so when you turn this guy on that big contactor there um and you measure between the phases you get real consistent like 380 to 382 between the phases and then from each of the phases to ground you get somewhere around 200 volts so this is the step up transformer and then once it's up to 450 then they get it back down you know clip off the tops of the sine wave to get it normalized and you know i'm i'm I, i'm guessing that's what i'm guessing to get to a real stable 380 volts um and then of course we got this right here that'll connect in and then this whole cabinet right here controls the water chiller the laser power source the servos uh it also runs the computer you know cabinet here it's got some big scratches on it there from probably the shipping process um the pc is down there i gotta say that some parts of this are w really well done and organized and other parts you know are not so um but anyway guys i want to say thanks to chris for the uh, information and um so hopefully in the next video i'll have all this wired up and you'll see this machine up and running as far as everything else i mean it's a little messy in here you see my cabinets open from the from the painting and i cut a bunch of stuff on that guy my true cut machine by the way so for those of you that that don't know i, I kind of alluded to this in a video a while back true cut uh has decided to retire the owners of True Cut. They've been really great people. They've got a good reputation in the industry, and uh, I was really proud to work with them. Uh, the opportunity that I kind of alluded to was that they had approached me about taking over this brand and continuing on to build tables, and that was, you know, still, that's actually still an option on the table. They're, they're trying to find a buyer that'll just take the whole thing over, their shop in Tennessee, somebody that will come buy it out and just take over and run the business. Uh, or they may separate it out where somebody buys the shop and the equipment but doesn't want to make plasma tables. And if that's the case, you know, it may work out that I would end up doing that. So uh, anyway, guys, um, that is that. We'll see how that works out. And um, we will catch you on the next video. See ya. I don't know why I let things get so messy i did uh some painting last night <clears throat> big batch of parts and of course you know i got to get all this stuff out and leave all this stuff just scattered everywhere so let me go show you what's out in the paint booth i didn't uh put any 110 outlets in here when i did all the electrical on this so you can see i got my old drain pipe there with an extension cord coming out and some light on for you 
Oh, and uh, I finally cleaned up in here. Of course, it didn't take long for leaves and crap to blow back in, but oh man, this was a, a disaster. I'd use some cheap paint that just it uh, the overspray was terrible. It would it would just fall right to the floor. It was too heavy to for the you know exhaust to pull it out. But uh, so got a split monogram. I got a couple of these, and uh, you can see the x in the blue over there and i did one in a different kind of pattern with some distressing in it almost looks like marbleizing um it was uh some of you guys that do this stuff uh, know about the torch effects copper effects and torch effects that's what it was and i wasn't happy with how just the bare torch effects and copper effects was looking so i did some candy red over the top of it and then some heat bluing on the on that part but anyway some more just custom stuff split monogram and um yeah a couple cowboys things there so uh this is my first winter painting in here so i did all this yesterday uh kind of finished out the day the hot you know the the warmest part of the day and um so it was, you know, close to 70 degrees here in Texas, but it, it only peaked, you know, for about an hour. And uh, you really need it to be in the mid 60s, you know, to paint. You can paint, you know, probably, you know, 55 degrees, but you just get, you don't get good results. And let me show you what I'm talking about. None of this stuff has clear on it. So um, it's very sensitive to... The flow out and lay out you can see I don't know if you can see that that's that's just base coat and normally base coat lays out super smooth in fact uh, you know this white's also base coat and you can see there's no well the shadowing from the lights might be interfering with that but you see there's no texture on that but when I mix the back the black base coat I didn't quite get enough reducer in it and ended up with some texture there so it's going to be fine. I'm going to fog on a lot of clear and get that taken care of. And, and of course, I got a few little areas to touch up on it because I was having to move stuff in and out, in and out to get all these different colors done. So um, so I got all the base on it, and then uh, I'll get clear on it here tomorrow. But I want to show you the electrical. I'm, I'm sorry, I'll get the clear on it today, this afternoon. So I got this heater in here, um, and how I was doing it is... You know, I would put a coat on, drag this heater out uh, while I was doing the coat, and then drag it back in and heat the room back up. But it actually heats it up pretty good. I do have this room uh, insulated uh, and spray foam in the ceiling that I did. You guys may remember seeing the videos on that. But um, anyway, so I'll get out here in the warmest part of the day today and get all this cleared. So this is my first winter painting in the paint booth. And... Um, yeah, so it's going to be a slow progress. You know, I, I can't quite crank it out as, as fast, uh, which is good for because for some reason my orders have slowed way down um, here, which is kind of odd. Normally this time of the year, I get super busy with Christmas, but, you know, probably a bunch of slackers that are going to call me up at uh, the second week in December and want something made. So uh, let me show you the uh, electrical now. 